What's up, man? Today's e-bike lesson is brake burpees. I'm gonna show you how to burp the brakes to remove any minor air that you've got down in your calipers or master cylinders and potentially build up a little bit more pressure on the brakes. We like them firm. That's gonna give us better brakes. So before we do that, let me explain to you a little bit for those of y'all that don't understand how hydraulic brakes work. You've got a hydraulic line. It's basically a hose. It's got hydraulic fluid, which is basically baby oil. It's a sealed unit. No air, no water, no contaminants. When you apply pressure, it pushes all at the same time. Should be instantaneous down the hydraulic line to the caliper. Caliper then closes the pistons on your rotor. Eyes, eyes up here. Do not be paying attention to that box. It's got a FedEx China shipping label on it and it's about the size of forks. Don't pay any attention to that. I got willpower. I haven't opened that up yet. Here's a little festerism I have. The shorter the line, the firmer the pressure should be. It's kind of common sense. So a three foot line, I should have that much pressure and it should be consistent. Now visualize if this line was a mile long, full of hydraulic fluid, baby oil, no air, no water, no contaminants, but it's a mile long. Theoretically, I'm not gonna have the same amount of pressure reaching the caliper after a mile, it should at some point deteriorate the amount of pressure. You just got a lot of variables as far as the compression characteristics of the fluid and then the expansion characteristics of the hydraulic line. So what I'm getting at is your rear brake line only being double what your front line is should be a little bit less firm. Does that make sense to you? That's basically how your brakes work. Now, let's do some burpees. Okay, step number one. We want to get this as close to level as we can. I loosened up my clamp and got it pretty close to level. Because we're only opening up the bleed port, it's not that critical that you're 100% perfectly level. Take your screw and washer off. Get your cup from your bleed kit with the proper fitting on there and put that down. This is, right now, this is, as you can see, empty. We're gonna put about a tablespoon or teaspoon, but we'll put a little bit of fluid in there in a minute. Save your screw, put it somewhere safe so you don't lose it. Okay, now is the time that I wish to add some oil to my cup here. This oil will be draining down gravity into the master cylinder as we push fluid down the line and up through the caliper and out through that bleed port. Now, if you look right here very closely, I don't know if you can see that level, but that is the oil that I saved when I removed my old brake lines and replaced them. This is the oil that I saved. The manufacturers and everything, they get real anal about telling you, there's a label on here, this is what I like. Disposal of used oil. Follow local county and or state codes for disposal. Keep out of reach of children. It's mineral oil. This is what you're putting on your baby's ass. <laughs> it's ridiculous. They're trying to scare you into buying $2 an ounce brake fluid mineral oil. I'm only gonna add about, that's not even a teaspoon. That might be half of a teaspoon of used oil because that's how much it doesn't matter. I still got my plunger in here keeping the oil from flowing. Now I'm gonna remove it. And the first thing you do, just you can put it just back in there, it's not gonna block the hole, is you can bump the brakes. If you do this a couple of times, if there's any air in here, I just saw the tiniest little bubble come up. That bubble is more than likely air that was underneath the stopper here and between this. But now that is completely gone. All right, so this is where it gets ingenious. Brilliant, if I don't say so myself. Basically, we're gonna copy the same procedures that we use, your auto mechanic uses, when they pressure or bleed your brakes, your hydraulic brakes on your car. Meaning, we're gonna apply pressure with the handbrake while slowly 
opening up this bleed port to let the fluid flow out and any little bits of air that might be inside the caliper. As the brake lever is reaching its limit, we're gonna close the valve and then we're gonna pump the brakes a couple of times. It's that simple. The real ingenuity is happening right here. On your rear caliper, this right here is the same T15 Torx that remove the bleed port screw from your master cylinder, same one that fits here. Now, this is where it's gonna get really good and you're really gonna love and appreciate this video and this tip. To do this, you do not need to remove the caliper from the mounting bracket or frame. There's no need for it. When we push the fluid out, it's gonna come out up here. Even if it was to leak, it's gonna come out right here, leak down like this, go to here and drip down. It is not getting anywhere near the pads. There's the top of the pads right there. And it's not getting anywhere near that rotor. You're thinking, oh, but Fester, when you open up this screw with pressure applied, fluid's gonna go everywhere and it's gonna get over everything and contaminate everything. Wrong, Grasshopper. With your garage shop towel and your, what did I say I keep forgetting? T15 Torx, punch a hole through here. Do it again, boom. Now look what you've got. You've got a towel that's going to grab and absorb any fluid leaking out. Look at that, right there. We're all ready to go. One squeeze of the lever, pushing fluid out here, you're not gonna get much more than a couple of drops out. And this towel, secured down on there, is gonna catch it all. Is this not brilliant? Here's where the magic happens. We are all ready. Squeezing the brake lever. You don't need to squeeze it with all your might. You just need pressure on here. And then here, I'm going to give it a little bit of an open. And you can see that lever going down and then close that lever back up. Pump it a little bit. Flick it with your fingers. Pressure, let's do it again. Very little open, not even a, not even a quarter of a turn. You can feel it leaking out, almost down to the bottom, close it back up. I'm only gonna do it two times. Actually, that feels really good. Damn, that does feel good. That feels really good. And I cannot even notice a difference up here in how much fluid I used. Cannot. Let's see if we made a mess. Look at that. Look at that right there. That's how much fluid came through. It did bleed through the other side, but it's not that much. And not one drop anywhere's on here. How much easier and simpler. Make sure you got that tight. We're done. And there's nothing to clean up. All right, so now we need to remove our bucket. Put a little more pressure pumps on there. This is your plunger, remember? Stick that all the way down. That's gonna create a vacuum and suction and then unscrew this. Make sure you've got your reservoir or your spare oil or the oil you're using or saving close by. And here's what I do. I just unscrew this. Give a little bit of tap on there to get any extra stuff in the reservoir and stick it back in here. Then when you get it back in there, you can lift up on the 
plunger and whatever fluid is in the bucket will drain slowly back into your thing until it's empty. Now you can just put all this stuff away. This is so damn easy, people. When you're paying a bike shop to do this, there's our screw and washer. Goes back on here. This is so easy. Can you actually believe that you've been paying a shop to do this for you? Now, there's no reason that you can't put a badge on the side of your car or truck and be a mobile bicycle mechanic yourself. Put that on there. Wipe up any residual mineral oil. Give the brake lever a couple of squeezes. Now I can bring my brake lever back up into position where I had it. I think it's about right there. Tighten it down. And I'm good to go ride with some firm pressure on my brakes. All right, man, that is it. I am out of here. See ya.